this the, is this the national this press? This is the national press, right, yes. Guys. Should have come here earlier. <laughs> Very important. Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, I knew somebody would boo. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I'm sorry, I, I've been delayed by Don't a worry. string of things I Absolutely. had to do. Right, OK, let's go. So why do you think, and this is a unique thing, winning a BAFTA for being a football commentator, what has been so special about you and your incredible career? Well, I can't say... It's left for other people to say whether they think it's been incredible. I mean, put it this way, I wasn't expecting to get a BAFTA award for it. Um, I'm not sure whether... I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the first football commentator to win one. Uh, I think Claire Balding won one, didn't she? So I'm not the first BBC sports person. Um, obviously very honoured. Um, amazed by the size of the event. I never knew I'd be doing all this. Uh, say that in the nicest possible way. Um, because obviously I've been a person for 50 years who's talked about other people's achievements and interviewed them about their reactions. So, you know, rather than me talking to Brian Clough or... Pep Guardiola, people are now trying to, wanting to talk to me. And it, it does seem a, bit, a little bit back to front, if you know what I mean, but very flattering, yeah. And how did you feel today doing your last BBC Football Commentary? How, did you feel different? I, tr I tried to treat it like any other game. I know that's a cliche, but at the end of it, I didn't want to make a mistake that I'd be remembered for on my last game. So I, I played it quite straight. Um, Crystal Palace... Well, that was phenomenal, really. I mean, I've had presents wherever I've gone, which in itself is um, a little bit embarrassing. Well, not embarrassing, but it wasn't expecting. Uh, sorry about the text messages are still coming oh, through. Um, no. Um, how can I put it? I don't know, really. Well, you felt you, you didn't do anything different? No, 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 I didn't, although the problem I've had is that next Sunday night... Uh, Get your days right, John. It's Saturday, isn't it, the cup final? Next Saturday night... This was so odd today with the Premier League being on a Sunday. Yeah. All of it. Um, next Saturday night, obviously very second in importance to the Royal Wedding, uh, there's, there's, a, really. <laughs> there's a Motty night on yes. BBC Two. Yes. And the lady who's produced it, Jo McCluska, has done a fantastic job. Let me just say that, because I've seen the preview. Um... But it's had a, they've had a camera in my face wherever I've been this season. Wow. And the minute the game ended today, I had to turn to that camera and record some links for the Motty night next week. So I didn't have time to feel emotional or what an anticlimax or anything like that. And then I had to <laughs> rush down to the pitch where Roy Hodgson was doing the lap of honour with the team and he came across the grass and made me a presentation on behalf of Crystal Palace... Then I grabbed a cheese sandwich on my way out and I jumped in the car because BAFTA was saying, you've got to be here by... Well, originally I got given a little bit of licence, but I was determined to be here by seven. Um, got in the car, uh, realised I'd left a pro uh, ten programmes in a nice case behind, so I've had to ring Crystal Palace tonight and get them... That uh, worries me more, really, than anything about <laughs> the commentary, but... Anyway, I got here hectic. and, yeah, it was a hectic day and it still is, really, because I'm standing here yeah. talking to a lot of very talented people. Oh, yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Any questions from those talented people? Yes. Hi. Um, uh, congratulations on your career and everything. Thank um, you. The goal I remember most of you commentating was Joe Cole's volley against Sweden in the 2006 World Cup. Yeah, very good goal. Um, but what was your favourite goal that you commentated on? Oh, the favourite goal. Gaza against Scotland in '96. That would come pretty high. Michael Owen in Germany when he got the hat-trick. Steven Gerrard, they showed that tonight for Liverpool in the cup final when West Ham thought they'd won the cup. Uh, Platini, oh, it's going back before you weren't even born, were you? <laughs> Platini when he scored for France against Portugal in 84. I didn't commentate on the Maradona goal against England, either of them, but I did commentate on Maradona against Belgium in the semi-final in Mexico, and those two goals were out of this world. So I could go on about goals for probably half an hour, so I don't want to bore you, but that's just a selection. That's a good one. Yes. And again, sorry to put you, uh, sorry, sorry to put you on the spot again, but who's the best Premier League player that you've uh, commentated on? English player, Gascoigne. Overseas players, Cantona, Henri and Cristiano Ronaldo, who I firmly believe is the best player in the world and probably the best player the world's ever seen. Yeah. Hi, John. Um, you've obviously uh, seen th football through, through many ages and obviously uh, it's sort of inundated with money now um, and sort of mollycoddled players. Has, has that sort of dampened your love of the game at all? Have you, could you see past that and, and just... No, I think you've got to move with the times. I mean, 
The game's changed in a million ways since I first started. There were no sponsors then. Everybody wore one to 11. There were no all-seater stadiums. The game has moved up several notches, partly thanks to, although I'm a BBC man, partly thanks to Sky Television and the exposure they brought, partly due to the formation of the Premier League in 1992, which moved us into a new era. People will tell you it's because of Paul Gascoigne's tears in 1990 that the game changed. It, well, that might have been a, a kind of transient, I don't know, a landmark in a way. But no, I mean, there's no, I couldn't have gone on commentating enthusiastically about football if I resented the amount of money in it because, you know, it, it's supply and demand. Everybody has value. It's not just England that pays big wages. What about Real Madrid and Barcelona? Um, and to be honest, I know there's a danger that the top six might pull away from the rest. I do think, well, maybe the top four, I don't know, five. That might be a... Th I'm an Arsenal fan. So. OK, well, in that case, you wouldn't be worried about that. <laughs> um, but, no, in all honesty... No, 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 I'm kidding. Um, well, I'm not, actually. No. Um, in, in, in all honesty, I think you've got to just accept it. It's the way of the world. Uh, the owners are now not British, most of them. Some of the coaches aren't British. We've imported the best from the continent and other countries. We've had a bigger investment in football than we could possibly have had just from people in the UK. Um, and the Premier League is a global phenomenon. You know, in 150 countries, kids are running around in shirts with Manchester United or Liverpool or Arsenal or Chelsea. H how would we have thought that would happen when we were back in the 80s? It's, it's staggering, and I, I've seen it happen, you know, bit by bit. Today was a big last day for you and Austin Wenger. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? Uh, yeah, as Arsene would say, look, <laughs> as he answers every question, look. Um, well, he had a win, didn't he? Yes, Well, I'm finally. pleased for him. Yeah. I'm pleased for him. Yeah. I mean, we won't debate the Arsene Wenger story. Everybody knows it's I'd love to, but done yeah, to yeah. death, hasn't it? Yes. You know, a great ten years, and then ten years when... He feels he was restricted by moving stadiums, had to set his best players. But I tell you what, even in the leanest of times, he picked up three FA Cups, yep. which yep. wasn't too bad. Absolutely. I've, sorry, I've dominated. I've, I've brought Arsenal into it. I apologise. Any other questions from... Yes. <laughs> Can't be any more, surely. Fault. You're very in demand, John. Go on. This is Don't the last go. one. Sorry, better be good. <clears throat> yeah. No, um, hi, John. Congratulations. Hello. Have you got any other jobs lined up? Now you've got a bit of free time. No. Do you know what? I haven't had a chance to think about it. I mean, it's been, as I said earlier, I've had so many demands on my time this last two or three weeks, I never thought this would happen. What will I do next? Well, what I'll do next is sit back and watch the World Cup, because I'm not commentating on that. So that takes care of June and July. And then come August, if I do start to get withdrawal symptoms, I'll go to everybody at the clubs, as I said to me, I'm always welcome as a guest. I think I'll test that invitation <laughs> fairly early on. Um, and... You know, I'll go to football and I'll, I'll see where it takes me. I, I might do a bit of speaking. Well, I'm, I'd better shut up now because they'll think I'm not very good. Um, we'll see. But honestly, honestly, I haven't signed anything with anybody. I haven't um, thought about another job. So I'm open to whatever takes me, whatever happens. Congratulations on a brilliantly you. deserved award. Thank you. Legend, John Watson. Well, that's very kind of you all. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank I've, you. Never been, I've never been applauded like that. <laughs> Some people in we your love own you. profession. Oh, we love you. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs>